I passed the castle on the way into Loch Marne, the castle where Pegram's excavation was located. The lad was doing his best to express his adolescent aggression. His effort was somewhat diminished by the fringe of milk on his lightly feathered upper lip. Hi there. What? What's your name, kid? Who are you calling, kid? Who the hell are you? I'm George Stobart, and I'm with the good guys. You're a head case, mister. A few sandwiches short of the picnic. Cut the crap and tell me your name. Liam McGuire. What are you doing hanging around the bar, McGuire? I'm on the run from me dad. Why? Did you do something bad? I ain't done nothing, boss. You can tell me, kid. Is it your dad? Oh, sir. He drinks every last penny down his evil throat. And here's the poor old mother bedridden and dying of presumption. I tried to buy her medicine. Chopped firewood for father Mahoney till me fingers bled. The old skin flint cheated me too. But I took the pennies he gave me back home. Look, ma, says I, see what your darling son has earned with his own sweat and blood. When suddenly, me dad appears and grabs the loot. I'm off to Dublin, heavy drinking, says he. Watch out till I get back. That's why I runned away. Something in the grin on his face told me he wasn't being strictly truthful. Compared to him, Huckleberry Finn was a candidate for altar boy of the year. What can you tell me about the castle, McGuire? What do you want to know? Well, can I get inside? No. It's locked up. Does anyone live there? No. Only, what do you want to know? Oh, nothing. You know something about the castle you're not telling me, don't you? No. What is it you're covering up? Is it something you're scared of? I ain't scared of nothing. I'll give you one last chance to tell me about the castle. Oh, yeah? And what if I don't? Then I'm taking you back to school. Oh, there's a ghost. It's called the Phantom of Loch Man. You're not telling me you believe in ghosts, are you? Mister, I seen it with me very own eyes. Last Tuesday night, I went up to see what that dig was about. I just reached the top of the wall when I hears this awful noise. What sort of noise? A horrible snuffling and snorting, like O'Brien's pig, only worst. It was coming from inside the castle. Did you find out what was making the noise in the castle? No fear. I just sat there on the wall like Humpty Dumpty. The moon was cracked and greasy like an old dinner plate. The yard was full of shadows. I could have been hiding anything. I would have gone home, but me legs had lost their stuffing. Did you get to see the ghost? Indeed I did. And a fearsome sight it is too. I sat on me ass, waited while the moon went down. Then out it comes from the shadows, all grey and tattered and hunched over like an old bent willow. Then I hears this spluttering and splashing and horrible laughter in the dark. I was so scared. Why, I fell off the bloody wall. I'm sure there's a rational explanation for what you saw at the castle. There is. The bloody place is haunted. Have you seen a guy dressed as a clown? Here in Loch Marne? They all dress like clowns. The man I'm looking for is a dangerous psychotic. Jesus. It's just like that film I saw. Did this clown see? And he's after this kid who saw him kill a guy. He tries to warn the sheriff. Only no one believes him. Then, while he's in the tub, the clown cuts him up with a chainsaw. My God. That doesn't sound suitable for a kid like you. Who are you calling a kid? I'm 25. Yeah, right. You're not a day over 14. 
Oh, no, it's 25 that I am. Married with a car and three kids. Ten kids if you count the wives. Do you know a man called Pegram? Can you describe him like on the telly in the cop shows? He's an English archaeologist. I know the man you mean if he's the one. Can you tell me where I'd find Pegram? No, I can't, because he's not here now. But if I sees him, I'll ask him. Do you know what Pegram was doing in the castle? Digging for buried treasure. Jewels and gold and skeletons, like in the films. Have you ever seen this man before? What a slimy character. No, I never seed him. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. It was a featureless plastic box, firmly attached to the wall of the building. I tugged at the plastic cover, but it didn't move. It was a trap door in the sidewalk. I tugged at the trap door, but it was locked from the inside. The young red-haired guy was plainly nervous about something. My name's George. Pleased to meet you, mister. My name's Fitzgerald. What can you tell me about the castle? There's nothing there. Just an old ruin. How old? I really couldn't tell you. Have you ever explored the castle yourself? I used to play there sometimes, when I was a kid. Then one of the little ones fell off the wall, broke his head and died. We didn't go there anymore. You haven't been up there recently? No. Do you know Professor Pegram? He's the archaeologist, isn't he? That's right. Did you work at Professor Pegram's dig? <laughs> what gave you that idea? Can I get you another drink? Oh, no, thank you. I shouldn't be drinking at all. I'm on tablets of my nerves. It's more than a pint and I'll pass out. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I'm sure I don't know him. See you later. The guy sat in the corner as if he was a permanent fixture. I'd been taught not to judge people by their appearance or their clothes or the length of their hair. Nobody ever said anything about runny noses. Hi there, old timer. What? No. No. Nasty cold you've got there. As soon as the words left my lips, I regretted them. Is there such a thing as a cold which isn't nasty? I put the question to Father Mahoney. Father says I, why were we born to suffer snot? What did he say? He said, it's my reward for being out all night like a sinner. Pious prig. Anyway. This is no ordinary cold. It is the hay fever. Polynosis? Thank you. You're not a policeman, are you? Excuse me? Police? No. I'd know it if you were. Can I buy you a beer? Very kind, I'm sure. But I don't drink the stuff Leary sells. What's wrong with it? I've seen what it can do. Can you tell me how to get into the castle? Don't even think about it, me bucko. Lockbarn Castle is haunted. That's what the kid outside told me, but I don't believe it. Then you're a fool. Ghosts don't bother me. I still want to visit that castle. You can't. It's not open to the public. There's no one around to stop me, is there? That's right. Nothing human, anyhow. Have you ever seen the ghost? To be sure. With me very own eyes. Can you describe the ghost? It was horrible. 
a wee stunted beast, long beak, straggly, flappy wings. Are you sure it wasn't a wild animal? A rabbit or a skunk or something? Skunk? In Loch Marl? That'll be the day. No, that was a ghost, to be sure. I think I know what you saw on the castle wall. I know what I saw. I don't think so. It was the kid, McGuire. What? He was up on the wall last Tuesday night. He thought you were the Phantom of Loch Marl. Oh! Do you know Pegram, the archaeologist? That's the scrawny fellow who was poking around at the castle, isn't it? No, I don't know him. What's that you're making? It's a necklace, me bucko. Oh, sure. Made out of steel wire? <laughs> That's right. A necklace for my pretty one. When my little lover feels it round her slender neck, she'll be mine. All mine. <laughs> Do you recognize the man in this photograph? I can't tell without my glasses. I'll see you later. <laughs> Almost as if he'd sensed my intentions, the old derelict snatched the wire from the table. Will you leave it alone, man? Look. I know how it seems, but my curiosity got the better of me. As soon as the old guy looked away, I grabbed his piece of wire. It was a short piece of wire, twisted into a rough circle. The young red-haired guy was plainly nervous about something. It was a beer-stained piece of toweling. The white whiskers on the bartender's flushed face were like garlands on a Christmas tree. The resemblance ended there. The top of his head was too slick and shiny to act as a perch for a Christmas angel. Top of the morning to you. I beg your pardon? Well, that's what you Irish say, isn't it? Do you want something? Or are you just flaunting your xenophobia? Well, I, I was trying to be sociable. <laughs> Is it a room you're after? No, thank you. I don't plan to stay too long. Who does? Most folk take one look at Loch Marden and jump back on the bus. Have you served any, uh, clowns recently? No. You're the first today. Do you know a man called Pegram? Indeed I do. Are you a friend of his, by any chance? Oh, no. I'm just trying to track him down. Me too. That son of a bitch should be locked away. Did Pegram stay here? Yes, he did. Six nights plus breakfast. Do you recognize this man? No, I don't. What do you want with him? I've got a score to settle. I don't want any trouble in the bar, mister. If it's a fight you're looking for, see Father Mahoney. A priest? A man of the cloth? Sure. And he teaches the boys how to box at the youth club. According to Mahoney, it develops character. Isn't that right, Pat? Didn't he teach you all the art of pugilism? Doyle. Sorry, Michael. I was miles away. What did you say? Ah, never mind. I'll try a glass of beer, please. Is this your first pint of real ale? Uh, well, I guess so. What's real ale, anyhow? Beer that's brewed from natural ingredients to traditional methods. It shouldn't be kept under pressure or refrigerated. And finally, it should have a good body and distinctive character. In other words, it's flat and warm with bits in, and it makes you fall over.
Look, I gotta be going. There was a vacant look on his cow-like face that said quite clearly, nobody home. Hi, my name's Stobart, George Stobart. Hello there, mister. What can I do for you? Do you know Professor Pegram? Do I know him? Do I know the good professor himself? No, I don't. I mean, I know who he is, but I don't know him to talk to. Do you know anything about Pegram's excavation? Only that he didn't have the right tools for the job. What he needed was shovels and a JCB. Pegram was digging for historical remains, not coal. Is that a fact? What the hell for? Is the science of archaeology part. Understanding how people used to live by what they've left behind. One day archaeologists might be digging up our remains. Imagine that, Mr. O'Brien. I wonder what they'll find. Well, it won't be arrowheads and beakers. Fast food cartons and flavored condoms, more likely. Did anyone from the village work at Pegram's dig? I tried it myself. But that high and mighty history man called me incontinent. What a nerve. Hadn't I dug more holes than the rest of them put together? Do you remember seeing Sean Fitzgerald at the dig? Hmm. Let me see now. I think me brain box needs a spot of lubrication. Can I buy you a drink? You most certainly can. Give me a drink for my friend here. Who? Oh. Doyle? Has he conned you into buying for him? Shame on you, Patrick. Same again. Just a point this time, Michael. One point of brown coming up. Do you remember Sean Fitzgerald now? I can picture the scene as if it was only last week. Come to think of it, it was only last week. Fitzgerald was there all right. Him and a bunch of students. He was speaking with... The boss man. Can you tell me anything about the castle on the hill? No, oh, I don't know much about anything. You should ask Mr. O'Brien here. He does joined up writing. Would you be one of them history fellows yourself? Oh no, I'm here on vacation. What's that? A vacation part. It's what the Americans call a holiday. Oh right. In Lochmar? You come to Loch Marne for a holiday? Sure. It's a very pretty place. Where the hell are you from, mister? California. I know it. That's where the brooms come from. <laughs> yeah. Amongst other things. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? It's a handsome mug on that fella, to be sure. Is he a film star? No. No. Bye for now. The guy sat in the corner as if he was a permanent fixture. Hello there. Uh, my name's George Stobart. Pleased to meet you, I'm Sheriff. Hey, O'Brien. Can I help you? Do you know Sean Fitzgerald? Yes, I do. What do you want with him? I want to talk to him about working at the dig. I can't imagine anyone implying Sean Fitzgerald on a dick. He wouldn't know a post hole from his elbow. Have you heard of the Phantom? More than that. I've seen it. And let me tell you, it's a dreadful spectacle. So it's not just a local legend. There really is a Phantom of Loch Marne. Oh, no. I was talking about the Phantom of the Opera. Have you ever heard of the Knights Templar? I most certainly have. A remarkable institution. Did you know, they were the originators of our system of credit. Their financial empire stretched from the Atlantic to the Caspian Sea. With bases in so many countries, they had to establish new methods of fiscal transfer. So, the Knights Templar were nothing but a bunch of bankers. I don't get it. Are you saying these Templar guys invented bank charges? In a manner of speaking, I suppose they did. What a dirty trick. Didn't anyone try to stop them? Oh, yes. They were arrested, and many were burnt at the stake. Good. They bloody well deserved it, if they were anything like my bank manager. 
What can you tell me about the castle, Mr. O'Brien? It's a fine site now, isn't it? Dates back to the 10th century, you know. Most of the existing building was added much later, of course. Are the ruins open to the public? Oh, no, it's much too dangerous. Anyway, there's nothing of interest remaining. How can I get into the castle? Well, those walls were built specifically to stop people getting in, Mr. Stobart. But I dare say you'll find a way, if you've the will. Can you tell me about the tripod which was found at the castle? Now, there's a bone of contention and controversy. It was dug up by an Englishman of the archaeological persuasion. Who was this Englishman? Professor Pegram, the same man who dug up the gem. Do you know where I can find Pegram? You're too late to meet that fella. Is he dead? Not that. But he's gone from the village. A sore point with our esteemed host, I might add. Do you know where Pegram has gone? I'm sorry, but I don't. He opened anchor in the dark and shipped out before the dark. Why did he do that? Who knows? A guilty conscience or a secret assignation. Whatever the reason, he'll not be missed in Lachmar. Maybe now the fuss about the gem has died down. We can get back to Norman. What can you tell me about the gem which Pegram found? Now there's a gem which should never have been taken. Man would have to be full of greed to covet that stuff. No. What's your interest no. in the Jew? You're not a reporter, are you? Oh no. Thank the Lord for that. Why is Pegram's departure upset the landlord? He's lost a paying guest. That's why. More than that. There's the question of an unsettled bid. Poor Michael's seen red over the business, and I don't blame him. Can you tell me more about the landlord? Mick Leary? He's what you call a, a would-be sophisticate. The trouble is, his idea of sophistication extends as far as putting paper in the lavatory. I never worked out why he did that. It's much too dark in there to read. That's true. Have you ever run your hand over the back of the door? The graffiti is written in Braille. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Nope. I've never seen him before. Goodbye for now. Mr. Fitzgerald? Doyle told me you definitely worked at the dig. He's seen you there. You might as well admit it. I knew this would happen. I knew I'd get caught. I need to talk to Professor Pegram if he's still alive. What do you mean? Is he in danger? Yeah, you too, if I'm right. You're not from the Social Security. Hell no. What makes you think that? Well, uh, I was claiming benefit at the same time I was working for Pegram. I'm not in a position to make judgments, Sean. That's between you and your conscience. All I want is to talk to Pegram about the gem. But he's not here! I know that. But he left that package with you, didn't he? So where did Pegram go? I don't know. I swear it. He came to see me early this morning. He said he was leaving. He asked me to give this package to a guy called Marque. Show me what's in the package, Sean. I, I can't do that. Why not? I promised the professor. So what? You didn't have any qualms about your benefit scam. So where's the harm in taking a peek inside Pegram's package? You don't know these people. I can't. I don't dare. This is your last chance to show me the package, Fitzgerald. I've been patient with you, but now it's time to kick ass. But he'll kill me! Who will? The man from Paris! Jack Marquet! Pegram told me if I gave him the package, unopened, I'd hear no more about it. But if I double-crossed Marquet, I'd be dead. I'll deal with Jacques Marquet. Give the package to me. No! Why should I trust you? I don't know who to trust anymore. I wish I'd never even heard of the Lockmarn gem. Hey, I just seen a big red. Get out of here, Maguire. Come back when you're old enough. What's the lad howling about? A big red sports car. 
Sean Fitzgerald's been run over. Get out! Noisy little tyke. Maybe you should send out some medicinal brandy maker. Oh, yes. And who's going to pay for it? Not me. Me too, neither. I was telling the truth about Fitzy, mister. Okay, okay, calm down. Now tell me what happened. I was standing here, minding me own business, when I saw this beautiful red sports car coming up over the hill. Would you look at that, says I, and I going over to take a closer look. Next thing, Fitzy comes tearing out of the pub and nearly knocks me on the ass, but the car just flies at him. It was too fast for poor old Fitzy, and ate him an awful wallop. He goes flying up on top. Jesus, says I. I thought he was a goner. Next thing, the driver hops out, and I couldn't believe my eyes. He was dressed like a bloody pixie. Hey, Maguire. What? Did this pixie have a scar on his cheek? I couldn't see. He was wearing a stupid mask. Are you a special agent? Sorry to disappoint you, kid, but I'm not. Did Fitzgerald drop anything when he was hit? I didn't see. It all happened so fast. Maybe the package fell somewhere out of sight. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. The plastic cover had been smashed and broken away, revealing a switch. The plastic cover had been smashed and broken away, revealing a switch. I pushed the switch down, but in doing so, it snapped off in my hand. It was a trap door in the sidewalk. I tugged at the trap door, but it was locked from the inside. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir? May I have oh. another beer, please? Certainly, sir. Same again? Yeah, please. How is this stuff made? That's the secret of the master brewer, sir. Each batter is lovingly manhandled in time-honored fashion, suspended on skillfully tied ropes of the finest hemp, lowered into the cellar, utilizing the forces of original gravity, like manner from heaven. I'm sorry, but the pump appears to be broken. I could fix it for you. I don't think so. This is a job for a professional electrician. Oh, well, at least the glass washer is still working. It's not my idea, is it? It just so happens I'm an electrician. Check out my credentials. Well, no. Isn't that marvellous? <laughs> Here's a house bedeviled with faulty wiring of a wayward nature. Here's you, an electric man, with a little plastic card to prove it. Hmm. I still want to see what you can do before I let you touch me beer pumps. You can make a start on the glass washer. No! No! And when you finish that, will you take a look at the pumps? It was an electric glass washer. It looked even older than the barman. I couldn't see anything obviously wrong with the machine. I figured it must be the wiring. No! No! It was an electrical plug attached to the glass washer. I used all my knowledge of electrical engineering to examine the plug. Mm -hmm. 
I replaced the fuse with a piece of wire. I knew it was dangerous, but I was desperate enough to disregard everything I knew about standard safety precautions. Excuse me, Mr. Leary. I fixed your glass washer, no problem. Bingo! And a blessing to all the saints. A free half pint to that man on the house. No. Could you take a look at the beer pumps? Well, I guess so, but I'm not making any promises. If you can't fix them, I'll have a riot on me hands. The pumps are in the cellar, right? That's right. You'll find a flashlight down there somewhere. It was the lever which locked the trap door. I pushed the lever and heard the grating of metal, but nothing appeared to happen. I lifted the trap door and an overpowering smell of stale beer rose from the cellar below. I looked down on a stone tiled floor, way too far to jump. Excuse me. There was a nasty feeling in my guts I usually associated with light opera. It was Khan. What's the problem? Did you see what happened here a few minutes ago? What was that? A man was involved in an unfortunate accident. I didn't see anything. What about the boy? Well, he doesn't know anything either. The kid, well, you know how it is in these rural communities. Not enough genes to go around. I prayed McGuire had the sense to keep his mouth shut. Was the guy hurt bad? He's been taken care of, but he thinks he dropped a small parcel. You didn't happen to find it, did you? If I had, I would have taken it to the police. Of course. Thank you. Now I could see, I spotted Mr. Leary's flashlight easily. Then I noticed a flash of light, something sparkling beneath the open trap door. It was Pegram's gem, all right. A large, uncut blue stone. I guess I was already under its spell. Did you find it? What? Whatever you was looking for. Uh, yeah. Listen, McGuire, I want you to keep this to yourself. No problem, old. Just chuck us up a crate of lager. No way. You're not old enough. We can sell it and make some cash. Forget it, kid. I couldn't betray Mr. Leary's trust. I could, for sure. That old misery guts deserves it. If you want to do me a favor, keep a lookout for that guy in the suit. Okay. But it'll cost you a pack of the chips. Oh, and shout if you see that Ferrari. It was a large blue gemstone. It was the barman's flashlight. It was a rusty faucet. The faucet creaked, coughed, and spewed out a stream of rusty colored water. It was a rectangle of toweling printed with the words, Nagopalene Stout Builds Body. I held the towel under the faucet and soaked it with water. I shut off the faucet as tight as I could, but it kept on dripping.
The gates were made of solid, age-blackened wood. Pushing with all my strength got me nowhere. They didn't budge. I really need to start working out. The farmer's craggy face was set in a mask of aesthetic appreciation. His feet were set in a pair of manure-caked boots. Hi, do you speak English? Well, no. Uh, what if I was to say no? An implication of cognizance shrouded in denial. A pretty poser of a paradox indeed. I gave him the look I'd perfected when I was 12 and was going to be the greatest hypnotist of all time. It was a killer. Are you attempting to hypnotize me, or is it the constipation you're suffering? I was a little out of practice. What can you tell me about the castle? Not much, I'm sorry to say. Most of its history is long forgotten. Ah, but if these old stones could only speak, what stories they'd tell. Stories to make your toes curl and your blood run cold. You know, this castle is said to be over 600 years old. Have you seen Professor Pegram? No, he's packed up and gone. Do you happen to know where? Back in England, I suppose. Did you happen to see a red sports car down on the road? I caught a glimpse of a flash of red on the hill and heard the racket. Sure, it was an awful noise. A sports car, you say? A Ferrari, to be exact. A racing car? And what was it doing here? The poor fella must have been lost. The driver of the Ferrari was involved in an accident. Is that so? Yeah. He knocked somebody down outside the bar. What an idiot! How could a thing like that happen? He was traveling too fast. So fast, he ran right under the car? I mean, the car was traveling too fast. But you'd have thought the idiot could have heard it coming. Maybe you know the guy who was hit by the Ferrari. His name is Sean Fitzgerald. Oh, I know him all right. That's me nephew, the idiot responsible for the stacking of my hay cart. Was he killed by the car? Oh, no. But he has been abducted. Well... That's a relief, no. Aren't you going to look for your nephew? What for? From what you say, it's too late. Well, you could report the matter to the police. Better not. Besides, what could they do? Well, they could mount a search. They have only the one bicycle between them. In a question of superior acceleration, I put me money on the Ferrari. I think you ought to know exactly what Sean has gotten himself into. I'm not sure I want to know. But you're his uncle. His own flesh and blood. You're right. But what can I do? If I'm not here to guard it, some idiot might try to climb the haystack. What a moral dilemma. Stay here and guard this potentially lethal agricultural construction. Or to go off in search of the prodigal nephew, the very man responsible for said hazard. It'll need some thinking about. Why, there's no problem. You're right. Why didn't I think of it before? We'll demolish the haystack. You don't have to demolish the haystack to go look for Sean. I'll stay here in your place and warn anyone who's silly enough to climb it. Marvelous! I think I should start me inquiries in the bar. He strode off in the direction of McDevitt's bar, leaving me to contemplate the stack of hay. On the back of the cart was a crazily stacked tower of hay bales, leaning precariously against the castle wall. The stack of hay stopped, short of the top of the wall. Even if I stretched as far as I could, the wall was out of reach. What I needed was a slice or two of Alice's Wonderland. There was a narrow crack between two of the stones where the centuries-old mortar had crumbled away. I inserted the end of the lifting key in the mortarless crack and gave it a firm shove. It remained lodged in the wall, jutting out to form a step.
It was a rusted piece of iron, maybe part of a plow or something. The rope by which the goat was tethered had become tangled on the old plowshare. Behind the altar was a carved panel decorated with animals, birds, and plants. I tried in vain to move the panel. There was a pattern of five holes arranged on the wall. They'd been drilled there deliberately. I placed my fingers and thumb into the holes in the wall. Nothing happened. The sack contained a fine white powder. As I dipped my fingers into the soft white powder, I realized what it was. Plaster of Paris. I'd used it in kindergarten to make casts of animal paw prints. It was a statue which had fallen from its place on the wall. Five fingers of stone projected from the back of the carving. The statue was too heavy to lift. It overbalanced into the sand. As I swung the stone upright, I noticed it had left a pattern of holes in the sand. I sprinkled the plaster on the sand until the holes were filled. It was a rectangle of toweling printed with the words, Nagopaline Stout Builds Body. The towel was soaked through with water. The trickle of water was quickly absorbed by the plaster. My improvised plaster cast was slowly drying out. I eased the solid piece of plaster from the sand. Underneath, it had formed a perfect copy of the statue. The plaster cast was a pretty neat replica of the back of the stone, complete with protruding fingers. The hardened plaster cast fitted snugly into the five matching sockets. There was a soft thud, then silence.
It was a photograph of my father, the first one I ever took, with the first camera he ever bought me. They hadn't placed the bug on the photo. I had messages waiting to be played. You have three messages. Hey, Collard, it's me, your favorite editor. Ah, uh, guess what? I'm gonna give you a second chance. I need somebody to write the TV column. Pays lousy, so what's new? If you're interested, drop by the office. In fact, drop by the office anyway. We have to talk. That story of yours I spiked. It won't go away. You've made some dangerous enemies out there. Hey, Nico, it's your old pal. I mean, your new pal, George. Whoa, Ireland. <laughs> it's a whole different country. And I got some amazing news for you. Gem of a story, in fact. Oh, oh, gotta go. Yeah, fella here's got a drink lined up for me. See you tomorrow, Nico. Slonsha. Yep, only here for a day and I'm speaking the lingo like a local. Mademoiselle Coulard, this is Imelda Carchon. I wanted to thank you for being so understanding when... Come to lunch, why don't you? Tomorrow. I might have more news. There's a Monsieur Merlon coming to see me this evening. He says he knows why Pierre was murdered. In fact, he'll be here shortly. I shall let you know what he says. Goodbye, dear girl. Till tomorrow. Merlin? Oh, my God. Merlin's the killer. I'd better get over there and mourn her now. When it came to being two-faced, Imelda was up there with the best. I owed her nothing. But I couldn't just let her die. I arrived to find the Palais Royal courtyard deserted. I only hoped that I'd beaten the assassin here. I had to warn Imelda before it was too late. A doorbell. intercom system wasn't working. Bad sign. Somebody had cut the wire. Carchon's front door. There was a fresh scratch on the paint. The kind that's left when someone's picked the lock. If I was right, Imelda was getting a lesson from a mime artist. And it wasn't the old moving staircase routine. Locked? No way was I going to break through a door like that. If only I could get up to the window. That broken window looked like the best way in. It was held in place by wires. Hmm. Maybe it wasn't art after all. Maybe it was a cell phone transmitter. People say, what's the point of modern art? I say, isn't it obvious? Fixed tight. Presumably to stop critics stealing it. Who else would want to? Just your average modern art retaining wire. I unhooked the first wire. I released the second wire. Even with both wires removed, the statue remained upright. If I could deconstruct this, I could deconstruct anything. The window had been repaired with industrial plastic sheeting. The plastic sheet was thick and strong. 
I'd need more than my hands to tear it. Now that's what I call modern art. My God, I'm too late. Imelda. Oh no. Nico? Don't worry, you're going to be all right. You know that isn't true. It was Merlin, wasn't it? Dressed as a cavalier. Absurd. You came to warn me, didn't you? I must be crazy. Let me see you, Nico. All this time you were just using me. Which one is the real Imelda? You are an extraordinary girl. Thierry would have been so proud of you. You didn't know my father. So like him. Something about the eyes. I wish we'd had time to get to know each other. She was gone. She cheated me. Lied to me. Used me. But why? Even in death, Imelda looked the same. Beautiful, inscrutable. The Ice Queen alone in her ice palace. Around her neck was a locket. I opened it. Inside was a tiny gold key. I took the key. I had to leave. I knew I could never return. In the dim light, I caught the reflection of something metallic. A small, sinister-looking metal disc had been tucked under my father's box. It was a bug. Oh, chère cousine, you left me a little present. You shouldn't have. You don't scare me. Espèce de... The box was one of the few things my father left me. The elephant on the lid was a perfect match to cochons. The box was carved by my father. It never had a key. It was the key from Imelda's locket. I took out the key. I couldn't believe it. Imelda's key opened my father's box. I dreaded what I was going to find inside. It was a photograph of Imelda. But why here? In my father's box? I felt as if a black hole had swallowed me up. Imelda and Carchon grinning while behind them a village was being razed to the ground, its people butchered. And there, next to them, staring out at me across the years, my own father. There was a letter. I feared there was even worse to come.
Hotel St. Georges, Algiers, Friday. My darling Thierry, by the time you read this, you'll be safely out of Africa. You need not fear. Pierre and the organization do not know who you are really working for. Or about us. Did you think I would betray you? I could not. You wanted me to leave him, but I don't have your courage. I know too much of what has been going on here. They would find me and they would kill us both. Enjoy your life in Paris, Thierry. Your life of honor, of patriotic duty. Do they give medals to spies? No, they'll just give you a funny job in an embassy somewhere. I could never share that with you. Imagine me, a diplomat's wife. So I must stay here with Pierre, the two of us bound together by what we have done to this country. Au revoir, my love. You will be in my heart until I die. Imelda. Suddenly everything made sense. My father had been working undercover for the government. He was one of the good guys after all. He and Imelda must have fallen in love. She'd found out who he really was, so he had to leave. It had broken her heart, but she had never revealed it to anyone. I knew I couldn't either. Whatever he was doing, he'd had good reason to keep it secret. I decided I would respect that and tell nobody. I knew it was George. For a moment I was tempted to pretend that I was out, or ask him to go away and come back later. But then... Come in. Hello, George. So, where did you stay last night? At McDevitt's. I got to drinking with Doyle and a couple of the guys. That explains why you look so ill today. Did you get any sleep at all? Not much. I had to share the room with another guy. Did he snow? Hardly. He was dead. And you say Pigram has disappeared? Without a trace. But my visit wasn't a complete waste of time. Pigram's gem? The Templar's gem. Whoever Jacques Marquet is, he's in for a disappointment. Jacques Marquet? He's the guy who should have collected the gem from Fitzgerald. What are your plans? I want to find out who, what, or where Montfaucon was. All I've got to go by is the name and a picture of a hanged man. Do you want to look after the gem? No, Georges. I'd be too tempted to sell it. I can't sit here all day, much as I'd like to. Okay. Don't forget to look for Lobino at the Kron Museum. And why don't you see if Rosso has heard anything? Okay. Anything else I can do for you while I'm out? Shopping, a trip to the laundromat? Just take care of yourself. I so much wanted to talk to George about everything that had happened, but I knew I never could. My father's connection to Africa would have to remain a secret forever. His bravery would be known only to the government and to me. Revealing it would just damage his memory. People would take the story and twist it. Before long, he would be the villain and Carchon would be the hero. I know how they do that. I'm a journalist. It was Rosso's sidekick, Sergeant Moo. Sergeant Moo? Uh, yes. I know the identity of the dead guy. His name was Plantow. Is that so? 
You knew him, did you? No, but... We'll know everything there is to know about him soon enough. I'm trying to be helpful here. The best way you can help us is to go home, monsieur. I'd like to report an assault. Yes, monsieur? Where is the victim? I'm the victim. I've been harassed by a pair of thugs. I see. And where did this alleged assault take place? Outside the Hotel Ubu. They stopped me as I was leaving and went through my pockets. Could you describe the suspects, monsieur? One looked like a gorilla, and the other looked like a weasel. Their names are Flap and Guido. Oh, I'll get them this time. Have you heard of a man called Marquet? Yes. He used to be known as the Mole of Montmartre. I heard he's been hospitalized, probably by one of his rivals. Which hospital was Marquet taken to? The Agenmeyer Clinic, in the Avenue des Hérissons. Why was Marquet known as the Mole of Montmartre? Because he lived in Montmartre, I suppose. Yeah, but why the Mole? I don't know. Maybe he ruined people's lawns. Do you know a man named Khan? He's a shifty-looking guy with a scar on his left cheek. No, monsieur. He also calls himself Thomas Merlin. I'm sorry, Monsieur Stobart. I don't know him. Has this man any connection with the bombing of the cafe? Yes. I believe Khan was the name he used when he hired the clown costume. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. It's the guy who bombed the cafe. The clown. This man looks nothing like a clown. He's taken off his grease paint and costume. Then there is nothing to link this man with the killing. Nothing? Look at those murderous eyes. Hmm. Hardly likely to get him convicted. See you later, Sergeant. The guy seemed to be practicing his air of authority. Today, he was working on his withering stare. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Really? If you wish to make an appointment, see the receptionist. I'm looking for a guy named Jacques Marquet. In which department does he work? He doesn't. He's a patient. I see. You do realize there are strict policies regarding visiting hours, don't you? This is important. I have to talk to Marquet urgently. We make no exceptions to the rules. It's a matter of life and death. The well-oiled running of this hospital is a matter of life and death. That's why we have rules. I think I ought to warn you that Marquet is not what he seems. Explain yourself. He's in league with a bunch of guys who want to take over the world. Nonsense. Besides, Marquet's employers have paid in advance for one of our most exclusive private rooms. Could you tell me who Marquet's employers are? Certainly not. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, sir. I do not. Thanks for your help. The woman managed to look overworked and hassled, though she didn't appear to be doing anything. Excuse me. Yes, sir? Is this the Hagenmeyer Clinic? That's correct. I thought I was in a garden center. Oh, the plans. They were my idea. A little greenery to evoke the spirit of nature. How may I help you? I'm here to see Jacques Marquet. Oh, yes. Are you related to our client, sir? No, I'm conducting a private investigation. Then I can't help you. 
So, do I get to see Marquet before the funeral? That attitude will get you nowhere. My instructions were quite clear. No one gets to see Marquet. So, unless you can prove you're a relative or a close acquaintance, you're wasting your time here. Has Marquet been visited by a man in a clown costume? Oh, no. You haven't seen a man in disguise? Well, there's Theodore the Bear. He comes every Thursday to entertain the children. Personally, I think he scares them half to death in that crummy old bear suit. If I was stuck on my back with tubes in every orifice, he's the last person I'd want to see. Has Marquet had a visit from a pair of gangsters? I should hope not. Can you describe them? A thin guy who looks like a weasel and his friend, the gorilla. Sounds as if they escaped from a zoo. Have you seen this man here at the clinic? No, sir. And I never forget a face. Look at this ID pass. So you're Merlin. Marquet has been asking for you. For me? Yes. He was shouting your name when they brought him in here. Now, let me see. He was on Ward B-12, as I recall. Oh, he's being transferred to... Oh, dear. He's on Ward J-2. That's... Nurse Grendel's ward. What's so bad about Nurse Grendel? She runs that ward like a South American prison. Keeping a well-disciplined ward isn't a crime, is it? Well-disciplined. In the discipline and punishment stakes, she'd whip the butt off the Marquis de Sade. Everything, I mean everything, is done to a strict routine. Six o'clock, alarm call. Six ten, bowel movements, and woe betide anyone who doesn't have a result. Those patients of hers are like Pavlova's dogs. She sounds like a real nightmare. And then some. If Nurse Grendel is that bad, how come the authorities tolerate her? She's like part of the furniture. I was beginning to get the picture. This woman was jealous, with a big green capital J. How do I find Nurse Grendel's ward? Down the corridor on the left, turn right at the senior consultant's washroom. Right again at the executive coffee lounge. Bear left past the administrator's sauna. And turn left at the end. That's J2. And good luck. Thanks for your help, ma'am. You're welcome. As I turned the corner, I saw the source of the hellish noise which echoed through the corridors. It was an industrial polishing machine with an odd-looking guy in tow. Oh, oui, monsieur. Is this ward J2? It is, but uh, you're not supposed to be here. We have strict rules about visiting hours. Can't you make an exception? I've come all the way from California. You must speak to the doctor. I can't wait that long. What if he snuffs it? You can't talk like that here. This is a hospital. You will have to leave. He looked blissfully happy, for no apparent reason. Hello. What's that? I said, hello. Oh, hi. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. That's what I thought you said. Don't look so down in the mouth. No matter how bad things seem, I never let life get on top of me. Oh, yeah? What's your secret? Why, it's easy. All you have to do is smile and whistle this little tune. You know what? If you start whistling, I'll bust you in the teeth. It's a deal. What's the problem with Nurse Grendel? She's uptight and twisted on account of a broken heart. Oh, that's too bad. I thought she was just plain bad tempered. That also. Uh, by the way, sir, I wouldn't stand too close to Mr. Shiny's grease valve. If he has an emission, it'll take the shine clean off your shoes. Say, nice sneakers. Thanks. Have you seen any unsavory characters lurking about in the quarters? 
No, sir, I haven't. But I've got nothing to worry about. What's that, Mr. Shiny? You'd take good care of the rascals, I'll bet you would. With a friend like him, I've no fear of oppressors. It must be a great comfort. He is. Would Mr. Shiny be your polishing machine by any chance? Please, don't call him that. He's more of a friend than a machine. I've had Mr. Shiny for three years, and he's never let me down once. How come you got so attached to a polishing machine? I asked you not to call him that. He's got a name, you know. Uh, yeah, Mr. Shiny. It's just that... You think it's odd, don't you? I don't mind. The rest of the staff think I'm twisted. I heard them snorking behind me back when I gave Mr. Shiny his weekly pull-through. Do you know where I'd find a patient called Marquet? No, I'm not allowed on the wards with Mr. Shiny. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Who is it? That's what I'm asking you. Have you seen him before? How should I know? You haven't told me who he is. Take a look at the photo. Yeah, okay. Now, have you seen him before? No. See you later. Yeah, take care now. The door didn't have a sign or label or any kind of identification. Hey now, you can't go in there. How come? I'm responsible for the contents of that cupboard. As I tugged the plug out of the socket, the polishing machine coughed, spluttered, and died. Mr. Shiny, what's wrong, pal? Good afternoon, Doctor. The patients are ready for your inspection, Doctor. Uh, thank you, Nurse. You'll need this, Doctor. She gave me a long, narrow metal box and a stunning smile. Thanks. Uh, could you take a look at the client in bed number three now? His name is Eric Sopmarsh. Do you have any clowns on the ward? Why, yes, we do. A professional clown. I'll bet he lightens the place up. Hardly. Monsieur Boissy has been in a coma for the last three months. What's wrong with Boissy? He was involved in a very nasty accident. A silly stunt involving a unicycle. His current condition is due to post-traumatic shock. It's unlikely he'll ever perform as a clown again. It's an ill wind that blows nobody any good. Do you have a patient named Marquet on this ward? Oh, oui, monsieur. He is in the private room at the end of the ward. He has been placed in strict isolation. Why is Marquet in quarantine? If you wish to know more, you'll have to speak to Herr Hagenmeier. All I know is that Marquet's room is strictly out of bounds. Do you know who paid for Marquet's room? No, of course I don't. Preferential treatment like that must cost an arm and a leg. That's not my concern, monsieur. Thank you, nurse. Au revoir, monsieur. This guy didn't look sick to me. He didn't have spots or stitches, and he certainly didn't have a fever. Hello? Anybody home? Who are you? My name is Dr. Stobart. 
And I'm here to steer you down the rocky road to recovery. Dr. Monroe said there was no cure for what I've got. Your problem is you stayed in bed too long. Are you sure you're a qualified doctor? You better believe it. What can you tell me about Marquet? He's the man in the private room, isn't he? That room was mine before I was tossed out like a common squatter. Do you know what's wrong with Marquet? They won't even say what's wrong with me. Tell me, Doctor, what's your opinion? Uh, it's too early to say. But I've been here for three months. What's your impression of Nurse Grendel? She's a very efficient young woman. Efficient? You make her sound like a vacuum cleaner. I've no complaints. The woman in reception described Nurse Grendel as a monster. Well, that's simply not true. She's quite strict, but that's her job, isn't it? You've got to have discipline in a place like this. I'm going to take your blood pressure. Why? I'm a doctor. It's my job. Seems fine to me. You're not doing it right. I'll come back later. Excuse me, sir. Aha! Just the man. You must be the new boy. Uh, yeah, I must be. Well, uh, stop wandering about and make yourself useful. Bernie, come here, boy. This is Benoit, my nephew. Can I trust you to look after him? He is fresh out of medical school. It will open his eyes to see a real doctor on the job. I'll bet. Show him around. Let him see some real suffering. The young man's face was full of eagerness and enthusiasm. I figured he was fresh from college. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Yes, sir. So what's your name, kid? Benoit, they call me Bunny. Bunny? Jeez, and you don't mind? Oh, I've gotten used to it. Okay, Benoit, you're gonna help me. Anything you say, sir. Do you know anything about a patient named Marquet? Uh, no, sir, I don't know much about any of the patients. I've never met a doctor who admits that he's only human. Uh, I'm only a trainee, sir. I'm sure I'll get the hang of things. Do you know the nurse on Ward J2? No, monsieur. This is my first day here. I can't wait to get my hands dirty. I was talking about treating my first patient, of course. I didn't mean to get my hands dirty with a nurse. Shut up, Benoit. Okay, sir. Follow me, Benoit. I'm right behind you, sir. Doctor! What is it? You haven't taken my blood pressure. <laughs> Seems fine to me. You're not doing it right. Of course I am. No, you're not. Dr. Monroe never did it like that. I can't take a satisfactory reading while you're excited like this. I'll come back later. 
Hey, Benoit. Yes, sir? Here, take this pressure gauge. Thank you, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Well, keep it safe until I think of something. Follow me, Benoit. I'm right behind you, sir. Hey, Benoit. Yes, sir? Do you still have that gauge I gave you? Ah, oh, yes. What do you want me to do with it? Use it on Nurse Grendel. Huh? Go on, she'll enjoy it. Well, okay. Dr. Stobart? Yeah? I would appreciate it if you saved your jokes for the intern's restroom. This is a hospital ward, not a cabaret. Oh, lighten up. I heard that. Any more nonsense and I shall report you to Dr. Hagenmeyer. Use it on Eric Sopmarsh. Okay. He sat like a statue of a sack of potatoes, but the cop's eyes were as watchful as a hawk's. I'm Dr. Stobart. Bonjour, Doctor. Have you seen any suspicious characters on the ward? Yeah, I have. A gorilla and a weasel? No. This was a tatty old bear. How was the bear acting suspiciously? Well, he was wearing a homburg. Is that against the law? No, but it's pretty weird for a bear. Have you heard of a guy called Marquet? He's in quarantine, Doc, right behind this ear door. Marquet is just the man I wanted to see. I wouldn't go in there if I was you. He has anthrax. I have to visit my patient. What for? Routine. I have to check he's still breathing. What if he's not? I'll sign the certificate and register his bed as vacant. That's a cold and distant attitude to death. Well, I've been institutionalized to the point of godlike aloofness. The white coat suits you. Thanks. Catch you later, officer. Au revoir, Doc. Marquet? Yes. I am Marquet. I've been expecting you. You have? Well, what are you waiting for? Get it over with. I just want to know what I should do with the jam. The Lachmar jam? Yeah, right here in my pocket. Oh, oh, I thought you were one of the... <laughs> Not me. I never inhaled. So, you were sent in my place? Uh, yeah. You could hardly make the trip to Ireland in your condition. What should I do with the gem? Deliver it to the Grand Master. Quickly tell him that I have found the tripod. <laughs> Right here, in Paris. You have it? Not yet. But it's been taken care of. I... I heard a couple of stooges with a flair for petty crime. Would that be Flap and Guido by any chance? You know them as for Klausner. He has gone off to Syria on a wild goose chase. They have geese in Syria? He, he uh, has a theory about the location of the... Uh, uh, That's enough excitement for one day, Monsieur Marquet. What are you doing here? Talking to this patient, of course. Monsieur Marquet is my patient. If Herr Hagenmeyer was to hear that... Okay, I'm going. I'd learned all I could from Marquet anyhow. 
Ah, there you are, sir. I was just coming to look for you. I finished with your pressure gauge. Thanks, Bunny. What's that noise? It sounds as if someone's having a cardiac arrest. It's all right. The doctor's in there with him. Are you sure he was a doctor? Oui, monsieur. He showed me his ID. It was Dr. Braille. There's no Dr. Braille working here. He's an imposter. The door's locked. Help me, officer. Stand back, monsieur. Hello, George. I found Jacques Marquet. Did he talk? Yeah, he talked. For the very last time. He's dead? Yeah. Killed in cold blood by a bogus doctor. That's despicable. What kind of guy would pass himself off as a doctor and take advantage of a dying man? Was it Khan? No. I don't know who he was, but it certainly wasn't Khan. He got away, out the window. Have you ever heard of the Hashi Ashin? No. Marquet said that they were his biggest enemy. His biggest enemy was the bogus doctor. Don't remind me. That guy was evil. He had wild, staring eyes like a dead fish. I'll never trust a doctor again. Do you think the assassin was responsible for killing Marquet? I don't think so. He could have finished him off the first time. Besides, Marquet would have recognized him. He was pumped to the gills with sedatives. He wouldn't have recognized the four horsemen of the apocalypse unless they'd introduced themselves. I guess I'd better go back and talk to that weirdo. Which one? Rosso or Sergeant Mu? Oh, but you're referring to Andre. I'll let you work it out. He was a thin-faced, pallid guy with a questionable taste in outlandish clothes. My mother used to dress like that. I beg your pardon, are you André Lobino? That's me? You want my autograph? No, I was told you may be able to help me. Help? My name is George Stobart. I'd like your professional opinion. Well, okay, shoot. Does the name Montfaucon mean anything to you? Sure, it was the most grisly spectacle in Paris until the revolution. A public toilet? Montfaucon was the place of execution for many thousands. A dark temple of death with row upon row of arches, each one framing a grim exhibit. Scores of rotting corpses swung on creaking rope while the crows devoured their flesh. That explains the image of the hanged man. I found a reference to Montfaucon in Ireland, in a village called Lochmarn. Lochmarn? That's where Pegram was digging. That's right. He'd left the excavation before I arrived. Do you know Pegram well? Not really. I met him at a conference. I would have liked to talk to him in depth, but I didn't have time. When was this? Oh, uh, back in the summer, uh, July, I think. I'd like your opinion on a medieval manuscript. Vraiment? Do you have it with you? No, it's too fragile. And besides, there are certain people who'd stop at nothing to get their hands on it. Intriguing. Uh, do you have a copy of the text? There isn't much. Only a few Latin phrases. I was kind of hoping you'd help decipher the pictures. Without seeing the manuscript, uh, that's a tall order. Just tell me one thing. What does the image of two men riding on the same horse suggest to you? The Knights Templar. Does the Templar seal appear on this manuscript? I'd love to see that for myself. The manuscript is being looked after by a friend. In Paris? Yeah. 
Not far from here, in fact. Well, uh, just give me the address and I'll uh, come around and take a look. I'm not so sure about that. Maybe I should check with her first. A female friend? Yeah, she's a woman. This friend who has the manuscript? Ah, uh, oui, uh, the anonymous girlfriend. She lives at 361 Rue Jarry. Ah, I know it well. I'll drop by just as soon as I can. Can you tell me anything about the Knights Templar? I sure can, Georgie. Soldiers, diplomats, mercenaries, monks, bankers, you name it, the Templars fit the bill. The greatest fighting force in Christendom, the Militia of Christ. Jeez. How did the Templars get their name? From the building in which they set up their headquarters. The King of Jerusalem gave them part of a mosque on the Temple Mount. It was said to have been the site of the original Temple of Solomon. The order became known first as the Knights of the Temple and later as the Knights Templar. You're a mine of information, André. Glad to be of help, Georgie. How come the Templars became so wealthy? There was a constant stream of new recruits to their ranks, many from noble families. They were required to swear a sacred oath of poverty, chastity, and obedience. So their money, goods, and lands were donated to the order. The Templars soon held land in France, Scotland, England, Spain, most of Europe, in fact. The poor Knights of Christ became the wealthiest power in Christendom. Is it true the treasure of the Knights Templar was never found? Ah, who knows? So little knowledge of what really happened remains. Or oh, if it does, the truth has never been made public. What do you mean by that? The Templars have attained a mythological status, like the King Arthur of the Britons. There are people even now who say the Templars still exist. Do you think that's likely? No, not for a minute. I think you ought to know that the tripod is going to be stolen. The uh, Lochman tripod? No. It's true. I can give you a description of the thieves. Before the supposed event has taken place? I heard them planning the raid. They're wasting their time. The tripod is protected by a state-of-the-art alarm system. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Why don't you loan the tripod to me for safekeeping? Because I'd never see it again. But don't you trust me? It's not a question of trust, George. That tripod is hundreds of years old and extremely fragile. I get your point. Have you ever heard of the Hashashin? Why, yes. It was a radical Muslim sect whose name became synonymous with murder. It was formed in 11th century Persia, shortly before the Crusades. At roughly the same time as the Templars. Yes. They gave a new word to our language, assassini, the assassins. How did the assassins get their name? From the legend surrounding the secrets of their initiation rites. A young man who sought to join the sect was given hashish until he drifted into dreams. He awoke to find himself in a fabulous garden with everything he could wish for. The freshest water, the most delicious food, the choicest hash, and the most delectable women imaginable. Cool. Do you have the address? I haven't finished the story. There was a price to pay for this taste of paradise. Wouldn't you just know it? The young man would wake the next day to find himself back in the real world. He was told that he'd been given a glimpse of the heaven reserved for holy martyrs. A heaven he would enjoy for eternity if he was willing to join the Hashashin. How did the assassins operate? Well, as I explained, the new recruits would be only too willing to die for the cause. They'd be instructed in the use of the dagger, poisons, and disguise. Then, the Grand Master of the sect would name an enemy of Allah. And they'd stop at nothing to eliminate that enemy. You got it. They were fearless and deadly. Does the cult of the assassin still exist? Take a look around at the world today. You tell me. Where was the site of Montfaucon? To the northeast, near the Canal Saint-Martin. But there's nothing there now. The old gibbet was torn down during the revolution.
Does this matchbook mean anything to you? Alamut is the name of the place where the Hashashin were based. Where is it? Somewhere in what used to be called Persia. I'm not too hot on modern geography, I'm afraid. The most recent map I have shows America as an English colony. Does the guy in this photograph look familiar to you? No. Thanks for your help, Andre. You're welcome. Leave it alone. That closet is over 3,000 years old. <clears throat> closet? It's a sarcophagus. It is closing time, Monsieur Lobino. Already, there just aren't enough hours in the day. More than enough for me. I can't wait to get home and put my feet up. Eh bien, see you tomorrow. Good night, Monsieur. Moron, get your ass over here and bring that flashlight. What the? Who's there? Let's get out of here. When I woke up, I was at the police station. Luckily, I managed to persuade Rosso I was innocent. Poor George. What a mess. I bungled the whole thing. I don't think so. You made a pretty good job of distracting those two crooks. Yeah, but the killer got away with the tripod. No, he didn't. He's not the only one who can dress up in costume. You mean, it was you who stole the tripod? Oh, hell, Nico. I could have been shot. Those dogs are more likely to shit their own feet. I just wish you'd told me your plans. We're supposed to be in this together. But how come you dressed up like a pantomime cat? Don't suck, Georgie, please. Oh, rats. And don't call me Georgie. Oh, I really thought you'd be pleased. After all, we've got the tripod. Oh, by the way, I had a visit from André Lobino. Oh, yeah. I hope you didn't mind me giving him your address. Not at all. It was lovely to see him again. He was over the moon when I showed him the manuscript. It's not often he gets that excited. He made a sketch of the Knight's crest to take back to the museum. I believe he's identified the family who bear that crest. I sure hope so. I'd better get back to the quest. I once read a list of low-stress jobs. It didn't include police work. Obviously, this guy hadn't read the same list.
Excuse me, officer. What do you know about the Knights Templar? Le Templier. Only that they were excommunicated in 1312 and hanged in their dozens within this very square. Boy, what they teach in the police academy these days. No, monsieur. I read it on that board over there. Shouldn't you be off directing traffic or something? You have seen the Parisian traffic, no? Yeah, so? I could direct the traffic. The most dangerous, the east side of Rome. Or I can sit here and enjoy the sun, the architecture, and the so so Sauvignon. Which would you choose? Yeah, but I'm not a policeman. What happened to duty? An excellent question, monsieur. I'll see you around. Oui, monsieur. I'll be there. The juggler was good. Why he couldn't put that kind of application into getting a real job, I had no idea. Maybe he just liked dressing up like a horse's ass. Hey, you with the balls. We? Oui? How did you learn to be a juggler? Juggler? What is this juggler? It's you. You juggle, that makes you a juggler. No! I am a jongleur! A jongleur? What's that? Mon Dieu! A jongleur is an artist, a master of the contragravitic aeroballetic mysteries. In centuries past, the courts of the crowns of Europe had the jongleurs, witty, erudite men to whom the monarchs turned in their hours of need. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Our enemies are at the borders, plague ravages the land, and the peasants are revolting. Thank God we've got Chuckles the Jongler to throw his balls around. I don't think so. That juggling doesn't look so difficult. Oh, it does not, does it not? Perhaps you feel you could do better, no? I'll give it a try. Be my guest. I had no idea what I was doing. But this guy was obviously an idiot, so how difficult could it be? A lot more difficult than I thought. That's how difficult. Still, it was my big chance to be derided by complete strangers. Not so easy after all, is it? No, I guess not. In the middle of the square was a manhole. I wondered if there might be something relevant beneath street level. I couldn't open it with my bare hands. What do you think you are doing? Leave that cover alone. Now. Sorry, no harm intended. You stay away from that. Hi again. We? Oui? What is it this time? What do you know about the Knights Templar? Le Templier? Ah, the last Grandmaster, Jacques Dumoulin, was burnt on an island in the Seine in 1314. Wow. You're pretty well educated for a juggler. No, monsieur. I read it on that board over there. Look, a red nose. Ah, you are a clown. A clown? No. If so, you would be a much better juggler. For a moment, an idea capered around near the spotlight of my attention, but fell down the pothole of abstraction before I could focus on it. Catch you later. Au revoir, monsieur. Hello again. Hello again, monsieur. Does this red nose mean anything to you? 
Ah, you are a clown. Do I look like a clown? No. Although you juggle like one. Now, if I'd known you were a clown, it would have been amusing. And not a humiliation for you. What do you mean? Who ever heard of a plain clothes clown? He had a point. So you're saying that if I juggle badly with a red nose, I'd be the king of comedy. But if I juggle badly without it... You look like a pathetic loon. We, oui, monsieur, you have it. I'll see you around. We, oui, monsieur, I'll be there. Hi again. Oui? What is it this time? I'd like to have another try at juggling, please. You have gone on a crash course, perhaps? No. I just had an insight into presentation. Huh? Allow me to demonstrate. The balls, please. If you insist on completing your humiliation, monsieur. Okay, now for my secret weapon. The juggler was speechless with rage. You could have mistaken him for a mime. And without a word, he collected his balls and left in a fury. Hey! You forgot one of your balls! Hey! But he didn't hear. Better still, deprived of his entertainment, the gendarme decided maybe he ought to do some policing for a change. A weird little boat lay tied up. I guess they used it to get maintenance crews around. Either that or the Phantom of the Opera was somewhere near. On the boat was a winching machine. The door was a handsome piece of work. I pushed against the door, but it seemed to be locked. My medieval French isn't much, but the few words I understood seemed to say, this is where the gallows used to stand, maybe. The inscription was hard to read, but I made out Templier and something about innocence. The wall had flaked and anything once written on it had long since gone. The wall seemed in very poor condition. The inscription was undecipherable. The plaster had cracked and was falling away. I wondered why. It was time for some brutal destruction. Hey, that's hollow. I'd poked a hole in an historical site. If any archaeologists came by, they'd lynch me for this. There was some sort of mechanism hidden inside the wall, with a lever in the middle of it. Here goes. The secret door had jammed. I couldn't get through that gap. 
on the boat was a winching machine. The hook lay in a bed of chain. At the bottom of the steps, I could see a glow. I could hear voices from the lit area. It seemed a good moment to be cautious. In the beginning was the end. An end wrought by our enemies began our darkness. In the end will be a beginning! An end to our enemies heralds our new day! Report. The military establishments are in flux. The end of the Cold War has left them with no clear goal and as obvious targets for budgetary cuts. We have successfully promoted a sense of betrayal in the upper echelons. They feel that the politicians have cast them adrift. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. Good. Mademoiselle? Governments are giving the corporations more respect than their own citizens. A groundswell of dissatisfaction and dissidence is growing. The corporations are becoming too large and complex for their own executives to control them. A blind belief in market forces is accelerating this trend the world over. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. The global population's belief in those that govern it has never been lower. We have inculcated a sense of immediacy and action over forethought and planning in all the major governments. They are acting on hasty decisions that cannot be completed or revoked without appearing foolish. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now! Excellent. The tired old governments are dying a slow death from their own incompetence and our machinations. Professor, where is the broken sword? Ah, as we discussed last time, with the loss of the manuscript, our search is as a corollary. Hindered. And as discussed last time, you have been furnished with a dramatically increased budget. What have you been doing with our money, Professor? We are working on the principle that the Templars, <coughs> that is to say our predecessors, hold on, these are the Templars? must have left a trail when they were hiding the clues to the Sword of Baphomet's location. I have a small army of historians and archaeologists ferreting out that trail. I trust these historians and archaeologists are more trustworthy than your friend Pegram. Pegram was loyal. He tried to protect the Lokmarn gem when the Hashashin came near. And failed. And don't call that Syrian maniac the Hashashin. He's an assassin. Plain and simple. That's not what he believes. He actually thinks. Silence! Do I have to remind you that we have a sacred duty? A trust? When Philippe attempted to destroy the Order, we lost the sword and our power with it. Now, we have the opportunity to reforge it. 
but time is short. We need results, not petty bickering, not excuses. Now, Professor Baphomet. Yes, of course, my apologies. We will find Baphomet and the sword manuscript or no. We have already found another element actually within Paris. Excellent. What is it? Well, we're not exactly sure at present. Ha! But I have my best people working on it. You would do well not to criticize others, Eklund. At least I have not murdered one of our own. Of course. That guy was the bogus doctor in the hospital. Marquet was a liability. Eklund dealt with him on my orders. I beg your pardon, Grandmaster. I did not mean to. Have you any good news for us, Professor? We already know three of the elements. We know that Klaus not had obtained the lens before he vanished. Where was he? Syria. We know that he arrived, but after that, nothing. The assassin. I fear so. It's a shame. Klausner was a good operative. This will be our last meeting in person until we locate the sword of Baphomet. I hope that I don't need to emphasize the importance of finding it. Without it, our endeavors come to nothing. With the sword reforged, we will have the power to sweep the stage of all opposition. The next time that we meet, it will be to become the princess of this world! Wow! There was a large circle marked out on the floor with a stump in the middle. Around the circle I could see words inlaid into the stone. On the circle's circumference were the Templar seal and two Latin phrases, non omnis moriar and clarior e tenebris, I shall not die completely, the brighter from the darkness. I noticed three small notches around the edge of the stump's top. The tripod's feet fitted neatly into the notches on the top of the stump. The light, falling from above, struck the gem and scattered in five neat rays. And each ray picked out a letter. Starting from the left, I could read M-A-R-I-B. Marib. Now all I had to do was figure out what the heck that meant. Nico, I've seen them. Who? The Templars. I spied on their meeting in the catacombs. And you saw the Knights Templar? I saw a bunch of guys masquerading as Templars. They're after something called the Sword of Baphomet. The bogus doctor was there, the guy who killed Marquet. The manuscript is the key, just as we thought. It shows the way to the broken sword, whatever that is. And how does the assassin fit into all this? He's out to stop them. These Neo-Templars, they're men and women in influential positions. Don't you see? Plantar was one of them. The assassin killed him for the manuscript, to stop them finding the sword. But now we have got the manuscript. Yes. So, how do they hope to find the sword? I don't know. They said something about a lens and a guy called Klausner who's gone to Syria. But they didn't seem to realize the significance of the very site of their meeting. You see, after they'd gone, I discovered a stone pedestal and a carved inscription. I set up the gem on the tripod, directly below a beam of light. The gem split the beam and lit the letters M-A-R-I-B.
B. Marip is a village in Syria. Then the Neo Templars are ahead of us. Klausner beat me to it. You're not thinking of going there yourself, are you? Why not? These guys are crazy and dangerous. That reminds me, you should leave the gem here. Okay. What about the tripod? I'll send it back to Andre anonymously. Do you think I should go to Marib? Syria is a long way, Georges. 